Hi everyone, this is Steve from Sculpting Training and Cyber Skills Boxing Academy. I want to do a quick talk to you tonight on conflict management. And I want to go over this chart on the board behind me, which is known as the Captain and Wheel Cycle, sometimes referred to as the Assault Cycle. And it's split into four sections. We've got our normal level where we start a bit of escalation from somebody, our escalation phase. We have our critical point at the top. We have some of our depressive states, and then we have uh, sort of our come down state afterwards, and then we have our depressive state afterwards. So four key parts that we've got, and obviously the dotted lines here represent that what can happen um, through this process when you go through conflict. Now, one of the best piece of advice all of you when dealing with conflict is remember you're not necessarily dealing with an angry person or a bad person. You're dealing with the emotions that a person is actually responding and showing you. And so I want to give you a little bit of an idea on conflict, the different stages and how training can help you during those aspects. And if you'd like some more information then please reach out to me and we can put some actual training on if it needs to be and come out or you can come to me and I'll do some training on you on how to deal with these different aspects. So the yellow press part, this is where most of us will be at normal times relax, nothing, and then occasionally we get a little bit annoyed and niggled by something. Nothing much to worry about. But then we get into what's known as an escalation phase. This is where we get a big spike. Now, when this happens here is we get a lot of adrenaline going into our system. But also our left side of our brain is about our rational thinking. And the right side is our survival mode. And what happens is as the adrenaline comes into the body and starts to, to spike up, the aim is become more and more short-tempered, angry, aggressive, confrontational. Our body switches from our left-hand side into our right-hand side. So therefore, we're unable to actually go through and rationally think about anything. So what we tend to do is when looking at um, communication-based skill training for people dealing with conflict, is we're focusing on this aspect here. Why do people get there? And how can I try and de-escalate it? So what techniques, what skills do I have? Then we have the problem is we get to what's known as a critical point. All of us do this for very, very different reasons. So when we get to that critical point, some people will shout and scream, some people will burst into tears, some people will lash out, uh, they'll hit things, people throw things, um, attack people as a result. Sometimes people have been known to say things that they don't mean. Um, which are very hurtful, deliberately trying to spark a disagreement, an argument or a response from somebody else. And when we get to that point, sometimes communication skills will work, but sometimes you need practical and physical intervention skills. So they can be things like breakaway techniques, self-defense skills, or in some cases, the ability to restrain an individual, depending on the environment you're in and the nature of the outburst the person has at a critical phase. Then what we have afterwards is that come down phase which is this bit here. This phase here lasts for about an hour and a half, um, where the body is starting to dump off and get rid of the adrenaline that's going through your system. Now what we need to be aware of, and what I've tried to draw here, is we've got lines is, what can very much happen then, is if something happens during that time period, that hour and a half afterwards, what can happen is you can get really spiked back up, the adrenaline surges back up in your body, you can end up back at critical point again. Something why sometimes people can be angry and aggressive and violent for quite a period of time. So something that you need to be aware of. And then you come down afterwards and you end up at a lower stage than you'll be normally. And this is what's known as a depressive state. And that's often where we feel bad when we reflect look back. I shouldn't have said what I said. I didn't mean what I did. I shouldn't have done what I did. All those aspects, those feelings come out. Now what we need to think about is us as individuals, if we're dealing with conflicting situations, when something gets up around here and these things happen, often it changes our opinion of people. We tend to reflect badly on people because we forget it's their emotions that we're dealing with. Their emotions, not them as a person. So as a result, that tends to change the way we think of the individual. So we do run some training down here, which looks at restorative practices. So ways you can reflect back afterwards the situation, look at well, what happened, what caused this spike, how did we deal with it? How can we change the way we treat people now after having an aspect of conflict or do we always
always judge them and expect them uh, and potentially lead them into this happening every time we meet them. So these are some of the aspects that we go through in different aspects of training when it comes to conflict. So we have different parts that we can deliver. We've got our communication skills, focusing on here, restorative and preventative practices, another one, and also our skills of dealing with physical outbursts at the top, which are things like safe self-defense breakaway, and hopefully in March, you know, everything's going to plan, we'll also be adding in restraint-based practice training as well. And remember, often these courses are also available, not just uh, as in-house training, but also we have qualifications, national recognised as well, including BTEX in some of these topics. So if you'd like some more information, please feel free to drop me a message, get in touch, and I'll see how we can help you. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed it.